Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. What a fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. This is cool, man. I mean, I can see some holes, but for the most part, you can tell this nobody's is, been here for a long time. Yeah, this is uh, one of the little lakes that we can sneak into here, hopefully, and catch still a, a good bite before it gets to be... Winter kill. Winter kill. <laughs> that size lake, that's what I'm worried about. You know, most winters, uh, we're using vehicles with wheels. Uh, Four-wheelers are definitely kind of our, uh, our mode of transportation of choice, but this winter's been a completely different deal. If you don't have snowmobiles, and in fact this winter, so much of our ability to get around and stay on fish has been due to having the wide track snowmobiles, those snowmobiles that are you know, designed to deal with real thick, heavy snow cover. Uh, nobody's been out here, and it's not because this is a hard lake to get to. I mean, the road is right there. People are probably waving at us all day long as they watch us fish. But for the most part, this lake is completely untouched. I can see a couple of old holes that somebody punched a long time ago, but for all intents and purposes, these fish should be uh, brand new. Today on In-Depth Outdoors, I'm fishing with Will Roseberg, and we're in central Minnesota targeting bluegills and crappies. Now, today is not our first day on the ice this week. In fact, uh, two days ago, we were up on Lake Superior looking to target lake trout, but the conditions were so bitterly cold that our camera equipment for the first time this winter actually failed us. We had to cancel the shoot, wait for warmer weather, and now today we're back out on the ice in a little bit more hospitable environment, if you will. You know, lately we've been hearing a lot about lakes that are stressed due to the very severe winter conditions we've had. Uh, so many of these bodies of water have two, three feet of ice covered with two feet of snow. Uh, all the, the weeds in the lakes are dying, they're consuming oxygen, and the fish are definitely stressed. So we're here on this small body of water to check to see how this system's faring, and hopefully through today's program we can give you some ideas. You know, now, now that warmer weather is on the horizon, guys are going to start to get back out on the water again, and I know you're going to run into conditions where the lakes you fish, the fish are probably going to be pretty stressed due to low oxygen level so uh, stick around I think you're gonna enjoy today's show there we go actually this is a good fish this isn't the monster oh it's pulling some drag I'm jealous James, target nice. species look at that this is uh that's a good crappie uh, it's not the biggest crappies that we're gonna catch today but uh, what happened here was we've been starting in shallow we're trying to find uh, where the fish are hanging as the oxygen levels deplete. We found fish in shallow hanging about seven feet down, but as we're moving out, the fish are still holding up close under the ice, but they seem to be a little more aggressive. I think we need to pop some more holes out here. I'll do it. I have not seen one fish deeper than seven feet, even though that. we're out in 20 feet of water now. That is That's a heck fish. of a crappie. Right in the jaw where he's supposed to be. The pug bug hooked him in the lip. We're gonna let him go. I do not want a clean fish. What's the max depth out here? Uh, 22 maybe. Come on, fish. There he is. I let that fish just eyeball that bait. They're so lethargic right now. And this is one of the reasons that we wanted to do this show. Oh, beautiful crappie, beautiful crappie. One of the reasons we wanted to do this show was because we knew once guys got back out on the ice, get some warmer temperatures, it's pretty easy to struggle. Uh, you get in the situation where we've had such a long, cold winter with so much snow cover, guys will go out on the lakes and they expect to see some great bluegill crappie action. But what's happened is the oxygen levels have dropped so low that the fish are no longer relating anywhere near the bottom. And you know, this is one of those circumstances where if you show up on one of these lakes expecting the fish to be, you know, middle of the water column or related to the bottom, you'll almost never mark a fish. I'm gonna let this fish go. 
Still a little chilly out here. Don't want to freeze him up, but that's a beautiful, beautiful crappie. Let him go. And what I'd like to do is kind of explain more about why we're not seeing these fish. You know, when you've got the surface of the ice and your transducer hanging down below it, the cone, the area of coverage that your transducer covers gets wider the deeper it gets. Well, when your transducer's hanging just below the ice and fish are coming in three, four feet below it, your transducer cone is just tiny. Uh, the fish can literally be just off to the side of the jig looking at the thing that you're jigging and you won't even see them on your flasher. So what ends up happening is guys, they'll, they'll fish down near the bottom, they don't mark fish, don't see fish, and they leave. But what's going on is you need to trust that these fish in these lakes with low oxygen levels are well above bottom, very often right under the ice. And if you jig right under the ice, then the fish will come in, get real close to that bait. And that's about the only time you'll ever mark them. So an interesting time of year. We finally get some warmer weather, and actually what happens is the fishing can get really tough. Uh, until we get some, some melt, some water coming into these bodies of water that kind of refreshes the lake, brings that oxygen level back up. It can actually be one of the toughest times of year to catch fish. Now, once the oxygen level is rebound, fishing's gangbusters, but coming out of these long, cold winters like this, things can be a little bit tricky. It feels like spring to us though, Will. 10 degrees and we're uh, feeling, uh, feeling awesome compared to what we've been fishing in. Markham Technologies introduces ice fishing to the digital age with the LX Digital Sonar System. Boasting vivid color LCD displays and features not found on other ice electronics, all digital units offer a user-defined display tailored to match the way you fish, an on-screen dashboard that puts critical information at your fingertips, and free firmware updates that guarantee your electronics are never outdated. This winter, step into the digital age with an LX Series Digital Sonar Unit from Markham Technologies. There's a fish. Finally got one of those little devils, Will. <laughs> he ain't very big, man, but I kind of feel like I accomplished something there. We are in one of the uh, more challenging situations here with these panfish. We've got fish that are riding right up underneath the ice and they're spooked by the light that's going down through the holes. And the reason we know this is if you punch a hole, you run up there with a the flasher, you drop a transducer down, you'll see a fish and he's gone almost immediately. I'll let his little hinder go. So the problem, of course, is we've got these fish that are about, you know, this far underneath the ice, and they absolutely do not want to come in to that bright shaft of light shining down through each hole. We've tried pulling the ice house over the top of us to shade us. That didn't work. We put, we put uh, ice chips in the holes to try to block the ice. And of course, on a cold day, that doesn't work very good when you're fishing small jigs. So really what I think it comes down to is we need to hope that more of this cloud cover comes in, cuts down the light from the sun, because we've got just mere seconds. When we punch holes, drop a transducer down, we almost always see fish right away, and then they just filter out and away from the hole. So we're kind of chasing them around this basin, and we have punched it out. Uh, basically where all the fish are, sitting out over 22, 23 feet of water, and we've gone up to 18 feet in every direction. So we kind of have the playing field set here. We just need to get into a situation where we can get these fish under the hole so they can take the baits, and they have been very, very reluctant to do that. Small accomplishments, Will. Well, we'll... Uh... We'll take it. It's a start. It's what we'll call the rally crappie. A <laughs> rally crappie. Do I have to turn my hat backwards? <laughs> oh, did you see that one? He just showed up and popped it. Nope. Did not see it. Oh. Crappie? Um, it doesn't feel like a crappie because it's a bluegill. Oh, nice. I have yet to catch one of those today. You've kind of been Mr. Bluegill. See, that's not a bad fish. I know I make fish look small. It's a problem that we have. That's what you get for being a starting forward, Will. <laughs> It's about eight and a half, close to nine. It's a nice fish, man. Do you want to take it home? No, that's all right. All right. There you go, buddy. There's, so, just, a, uh, there's just that part of me, my pride, that doesn't allow me to take home your fish. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> now we've got the sun starting to set. All of a sudden, my screen's starting to light up. I've seen fish in the last two or three holes. Well, uh, we that got one the sun back it. out now again, uh, throwing down more light, and the fish are scattered gone. And then it seems like every time it ducks back behind those clouds, then I get three, four fish show up. And these ones actually came through a little bit deeper, which is different. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means they're uh, a different school of fish or if they're starting to get more active. You'd think they'd come up if they get active, but whatever have, happens, it works. I have yet to mark a fish deeper than six, seven feet. That sun popped back out again and the fish went and got lethargic. 
you know, one of the things I love about ice fishing is just what's happening here today. We expect one thing, uh, and Mother Nature gives us something completely different, uh, a challenge, if you will, something to uh, have to figure out, kind of like unravel, like a puzzle. Uh, today has been um, such a learning experience. We knew we were going to have a, uh, the opportunity to run into fish that were really stressed out by low oxygen levels, but to see how they're adapting to their environment, uh, the, how they're using the water column and staying right up near the underside of that ice and making it so difficult for us to catch them because, you know, as soon as you punch that hole through the ice, then it just becomes this great big glaring beam of light down into the water, and that's very unnatural for them. So, you know, we've had to adjust on a lake where we normally catch fish throughout the midday under bright conditions, those bright conditions were absolutely working against us. We've got our uh, hat hung on the last two hours of the day here, hoping that these lower light levels will really make these fish turn on. There we go. This is a good crappie. It's, it's crazy, they're so close under the ice, it's almost in the hole. That is a beautiful fish. The color in this tainted water is just fantastic on these fish, and I got a a little green pug bug I switched to. And I don't know if it was the color or the time of day, but I caught a nice gill and now I got this crappie. So beautiful fish and he's gonna make a great dinner. Strike Master has redesigned ice drilling performance with their German engineered solar powered two stroke augers. Ice Fishing's fastest cutting augers, the three horsepower Laser Pro and two and a half horsepower Laser Mag don't just make a hole in the ice, they disintegrate it. Weighing 26 pounds, the 2.5 and 3 horsepower augers from Strike Master weigh less than most 2 horsepower augers from the competition. So if you want the lightest, most powerful two-stroke auger on the ice, it's time to go solo. This is kind of what we had feared, that this is what we'd find, that some of these smaller panfish lakes were really hurting. If you go on the, the Minnesota DNR website right now, they actually have lists of lakes that have been opened up to what's called liberalized fishing, which means there's no limits. They know the fish are so stressed that so many of them are gonna die that the DNR would rather have people just take them out versus just letting them decay under the ice. So, and you can use a lot of different methods. I mean, I, I think you can't use dynamite or poisons. <laughs> but you can use gill nets, you can use any method of angling you want. So those lakes that are small, shallow, with a lot of vegetation this year, there's gonna be a lot of those lakes that'll winter kill very severely. Hopefully this isn't one of them because this is such a really neat body of water. Oh, that's a self hooker there. <laughs> They're getting so shallow up under the ice. I mean, it's like three, four cranks. There's another nice one. I got another one nice one on the fish finder there. Two more actually. This guy is gonna go on the ice and I'm gonna see if I can't bring a buddy up to hang out with him. Cause I got another nice one there. This is what we've been waiting for all day long. You gotta take what the fish give you. And they were a little stingy midday today. And this fish is just eyeballing me. Let's see if I can't get him to come up and chase. Oh, now he's got a buddy. That'll usually do it. If I get Two fish down there looking at the same bait, that'll usually create a little competition and one of them will go and eat it. Come on now. I don't know if something's wrong with my bait. I did just throw it down right after catching that fish, so I didn't inspect it real close. Hopefully it didn't fall off. All right, that's two in a row that come up, took a look at it and didn't like what they saw. So I think I'll freshen it up. Like Will, I'm fishing a, a pug bug. This is glow red kind of a mainstay color for me. I'm fishing it in the largest size. I tried real small jigs today. Tiny plastics, little tiny little hair jigs. It didn't seem to matter. So the jig size really isn't critical. Just getting in a situation where these fish feel comfortable coming under the hole really was the linchpin to the whole day. Hopefully I got back down there in time. There we go. I think you might have called it, James. This. Uh... Our bite window right now, the sun is just about to dip behind the trees. And, I get to be uh, right once in a while. They're getting a little, this is a good fish, James. Oh, baby. Heck Woo. yeah. This is a noodle crappie. If we didn't have these noodles today, I don't think we'd have caught a fish. I no. mean, they're so finicky. 
Um, that's a really good fish too. Uh, probably that's my biggest of the day. I think you might have got a couple more. There we go. We got another half an hour, sir. Let's make some hay while the sun is still shining. I gotta hold my glove on before my finger breaks off and falls on the ice. Been able to fish without gloves most of the day. It's been a long time. I can't even remember the last time I've been able to be out on the ice all day long, this comfortable, fishing without gloves. The screen's just loaded. It's just not normal for crappies to be this numerous and this tough to catch. That's what happens when the oxygen levels drop in these lakes. Oh, here he comes. Eat it. Got it, yes. Gotta run him around in circles and tease him about two or three different times. Boy, he's a little subpar for size, but when he finally decided to eat it, he ate it. Got it all. I'm gonna have to go in there with the finger. Pop that loose. I don't know, might not even be able to get at it. There we go. Just a little guy, we'll let him go. Got two more down there, waiting to take the ride up upstairs. Come on, fish. That one was so aggressive. It's these tough bites like this where these rods just excel. I mean, you're not feeling much of anything. It's just all about that little light tip dropping like that. Come on, fish. In the transducer, stay hooked up. Oh yeah, this one's coming home. Nice fish there. Beautiful in the failing sunlight. I dig it. I'm gonna hurry. I don't wanna seem like I'm mistreating these fish or not respecting them. I just wanna catch another one. I'm gonna throw down some pretty miserable looking larva there and see if I can't catch another one before he swims off. That's the biggest thing. I mean, I've been able to keep these fish around. If I keep a bait in the water, I keep three, four of these fish just sitting there underneath the hole now, where if I uh, sit and dawdle a little bit, mess with bait or tie in a different jig, they swim away, they're gone. It could be hard to come across them again in, in a hole. Come on now. Another one. Just here with the sun going down. Oh, you know, it's rewarding when you work for them, I gotta tell you. Not the biggest crappie of the day, but definitely a beautiful crappie. Well, that is definitely not the biggest crappie of the day. <laughs> You've outclassed me, sir. <laughs> uh, and I do have a couple more down there that might be the biggest of the day. So do I. This body of water is capable of kicking out some 14 and 15 inch crappies. We just haven't caught one today. No, today's one of those days where the 12s and 13s that we worked for feel as good as a 14 or a 15 though. I am very glad we stuck it out today, Will. The new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter feature a new look and unmatched protection from the elements. The fully insulated Pro XT 1200 features a 1200 denier shell built for extreme conditions, while the Thermal Top XT 650 features a 650 denier shell that locks in heat and eliminates condensation. All extreme thermal shelters are built on Otter's legendary roto molded sled and proven oversized square tube frames. The all new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter, built tougher, stronger, smarter. Another thing that really helps, as you can see while I'm putting my line down here, I'm using an inline reel. And when these fish are extremely finicky, like we're finding today with the low oxygen and riding high in the water column, if you have a, a spinning reel, oh, <laughs> and I got another one right while I'm talking here. This isn't a big one, but if you have that spinning reel, you might impose some line twist. You might have a lure that's down there twisting. And if you've ever fished with a camera, you see a finicky gill, they want that thing to just barely move up and down. And if you got your uh, line twist spinning your jig, a lot of times that's going to spook, especially the bigger fish who are more picky on what they're going to eat. I'm going to catch another one, right? While we're talking about that, and this is actually a much better fish. Oh, right in the transducer. Oh, I almost lost this guy in the transducer, but that is a heck of a crappie. Like I was saying, this inline reel, I think makes a big difference. 
Gosh, this is a healthy, feisty little guy. They've got some spunk all of a sudden, James. Another end of mid-season crappie just before they start to head to the shallows. You can see now they're migrating from the basin depths up higher in the water column. Where we're catching them now, just as it's getting dark, they're actually starting to head in a little bit shallower, but they're still relating to that five and six feet below the ice. Um, that is a heck of a fish. Probably my big fish, I think I topped it for the day. So, like I say, this, this little pug bug loaded up with larva today has been the ticket. And then uh, I like using the inline reel, and I don't think I'd have caught more than one or two fish if I didn't have this noodle rod. So, this is actually a perfect setup for finicky crappies like you're going to find here for the next couple weeks before they start getting some melt and kick them back on. Because it's such a low oxygen level we've decided we're going to keep more fish because they're probably a little bit stressed right now. Come on fish. Oh, there he is. There he is. You know I'm actually surprised how late into the evening these fish are biting. I mean if you've paid any attention to oh that's a beautiful crappie. Come here buddy. Oh yeah. Show me the lip. That's a nice fish. We're right here at the end of the day, and like I was saying, I'm actually surprised how late into the day these fish keep feeding because the water clarity is really stained. That fish, one of the better ones of the day, going to come home with us. You know, one thing I should point out is that I did make a little bit of an adjustment here in the last probably half an hour. I was fishing that glow red pug bug, and once the light levels got as low as they are now, uh, the fish really had a hard time finding that in the water column. And what I did is I switched to a, uh, an orange glow jig from a wax-tailed pre-rigged body, and then I just cut the tail off. So uh, I loaded it up with spikes, and it just seems to be a jig that the fish are having a little bit easier time finding in the water column right now. So it's small change, something you might want to keep in mind if you find yourself in a similar situation. Now, one of the things I love about the way today turned out is, you know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, the big fish they caught, or they remember the days when they caught a lot of fish. But what I like about today is, you know, we came out on this body of water expecting one thing, and what we got was completely different. And instead of, you know, Will and I just packing it in and heading home, we took the time to kind of figure out really what was going on with these fish. And it, it is, of course, all related to the low oxygen levels in this lake. And this situation is one that guys all over the Midwest are going to have to deal with uh, due to the severity of the winter. So when you get out on these bodies of water, make sure you're aware of the fact that, you know, if it's a smaller body of water, doesn't have a lot of water running into it, uh, the fish might be riding very high in the water column. So be looking in that, you know, top two, three, four, five feet of water, even in 20, 30 feet of water, the fish will be right under the ice looking for that last little layer of water that has suitable dissolved oxygen. So we're going to close today's show. Will and I had a great day out here on the ice and just kind of looking into the crystal wall. Now that we've got some warmer weather coming, uh, this is my favorite time of the year out on the ice. So, you know, what do I see in that crystal ball? I see big river walleyes. I see a trip out to the Great Lakes targeting, hopefully, giant walleyes through the ice. And with a little luck, we'll be able to wrap up our ice fishing season catching giant northern pike through the ice. So if you put your ice gear away for the season, get it back out, get out there on the ice, start punching some holes. This is the best time of the year to be out there chasing fish. So from Will and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.